Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT TV. Before our dive into the Parasound amps over the last month, we spent quite a lot of time covering the Eclipse RP6000Fs, the 8000Fs, and the RF7s. After this, we received a ton of questions and requests regarding these center channels and what should be used to pair these units in a home theater kind of style environment as opposed to a two channel setup. As such, I want to dive into our two favorites, the 504C and the RC64 III. In addition to unboxing these units, I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Or, well, with these, it's going to be more of a top on bottom comparison, but you get the idea. In order to kind of see which unit is going to be best for you and what you get when you step up to that next level. All that said, if you have not already, please click that subscribe button below and click the little bell next to it to enable notifications. Don't miss an episode and get updates with every new release. It'll also be the first step towards getting you eligible for any of our contests and any of our giveaways that we have in the future. First off, let me get one thing out of the way. If you're able, identical LCR speakers is ideal. So if you have the ability, this is the way to go. Three RF7s for your front of house would be a killer setup. That said, spatial constraints are often a concern. Needing a horizontal as opposed to a vertical center can often be a concern. Home decor, wife acceptance factor, these all can play a big role. So basically, identical LCR does not always work for everyone. As such, there is a segment of products specifically designed to be centers and cover these needs. Another thing that I want to get out of the way before we go any further is voice matching or timber matching. We get the question all the time here, and also I received this question a ton when I worked for Clips directly. Should I match my speakers with the same brands? Is it okay to mix and match tiers of speakers within the same brand? On and on. Basically the concept is that speakers have a voice. They have a speaking voice. They very deliberately sound a certain way. Different materials are used in different brands and in different tiers of speakers, giving them their individual sound, which is what makes you like one brand or tier over another. By changing and mixing and matching units, it can be like two different people trying to talk to you at two different points in your listening area as opposed to one constant blended sound throughout. The reason I bring this up in a center channel video is because this is where I find it to be the most important. It's significantly more noticeable when you have a mismatched LCR than if you have mismatched surrounds. Do your best to match your brands, your tiers, and your materials used in the speakers. As for this unit, the 504C is designed to perfectly match the reference Premier line. It is the biggest center channel in the reference Premier line, and it'll perfectly match your RP8000F left and right channels in both appearance as well as sound. Now, Let's crack it out of the box and we will discuss it a bit further. As always, I'm gonna point my knife a little bit sideways and not dig too deeply into the box. All right, firstly, first thing we're gonna have is gonna be our user manual. As with all of our reference Premiere gear, this is going to go over everything in the reference Premiere line. It is not just specifically for the center channel. So you've got your 8,000s, your 6,000s, 5,000s, 4,000s, all your surrounds, your bookshelves, and every single center that Klipsch has to offer. Next, we're gonna have our warranty information. And finally, we have our Klipsch Reference Premier safety instructions, which you guys have heard me talk about this in the past. Really, it's just how not to break your speakers. And last but not least, we do have our four rubber feet to go on the corners of your system. Finally, let's get the center channel out of the box and we can discuss it a little bit further. And here we have our Klipsch RP504C. Now this particular unit is walnut, but it is also available in black ash. Let's talk a little bit more about why you should or maybe shouldn't choose this unit for your home. First off, as mentioned a moment ago, spatial constraints may push you one way or the other. You may need something smaller or maybe you have room for something a bit bigger. The 504C is 6.81 inches tall, 33.13 inches wide, and 14.46 inches deep. 
Appearance-wise, it uses the same furniture-grade veneer that you see throughout the entire series. A magnetic grill, which is easy to take off and put back on in order to show off the internal drive components. And as for those drive components, the spun copper ceramic woofers are still present, but it uses four five and a quarter inch woofers as opposed to the dual sixes or eights that you see in the other units. The one inch titanium vented tweeter is identical to the previously discussed models, and it is a staple in this product line. Maintaining these same materials and these same components allows you to perfectly blend with the rest of your system. Now, lastly, let's go ahead and turn it around back. to show off the single Tractrix port. Now, I do gloss over all this really quickly because while I wanna be helpful and share all this info with you, all of this is readily available on the Eclipse website and in the manuals and spec sheets. In the spirit of taking these one step further though, I wanna to get to the part of the video where I take all this apart and show you what's inside. So, let's go. All right, we're gonna start with the horn and tweeter here. As with previous, very easy to take off. You get a little bit of a finger behind it, then just simply peel off the rest of the way. Rubberized portion is off. Next, you're gonna have eight screws to remove the horn. As I've said previously, you can use a drill for this part if you want to, but make sure you are being careful, especially when reinserting the screws, so not to damage the cabinet by screwing too deep or stripping out the screw holes. Now this is going to want to fall forward from the bottom first. And what you'll notice is that we actually have a clip on the top as well as a clip on the bottom. So it's not going to want to just come straight out. As with all these, they are locking clips. So you want to grab it with your pinchers. You may need to remove or push back. Not sure if you can see this here or not. You can grab and kind of pinch the back side and yank that out. Now, what you can't see when it's in there is the locking mechanism itself. So I'm going to pull this cover back here so you can see it a little bit better. Basically, there's this little pin inside here that locks into the hole in the... So there's a hole in this little clamp and there's a lock that locks into that place. So what you're trying to do with your, while pinching, is you're actually pushing on that release to release it from where it's holding on to there. On our other side here, we have the same thing. Pinch, and pull it right out. You can see that again. You have a little hole there. And then you have your release mechanism that you are trying to push down to release it from that hole. Now, as with the previous videos, what we're looking at is we have this beauty ring that's around the edge here that we need to remove before we can get to the screw holes. As we said before, it's kind of intimidating, but your best friend is just gonna be just something small and something soft to a degree to kind of pry with. My weapon of choice is typically just a flathead screwdriver, but I wrap it in electrical tape in order to soften it so I'm not scratching this material here. You get under there, you're just gonna slowly work your way around the edge. Once you have a little bit of it off, you can just use your fingertips. Work your way around the edges. 
and there we have our screws. And you're going to want to take out your six screws. That's going to want to come out at the bottom first. That's why I was holding on that bottom. You're going to pull this forward. You have a little bit more slack with the woofer, it looks like, than you did with the tweeter. So essentially what you're doing, if you look real closely, you'll be able to see there's a little pin to push to release the locking mechanism that holds it onto this here. Now, I don't have any nails right now, so what I'm going to use I'm actually going to use this here to push that forward and release that clip. Same with this. And if it's particularly feisty, sometimes they can give you a problem, but most of the time you just push in and lift up and you release that as well. And here we have our fluffer out of the box. All right, so here you have your drive components of your 504C. I think that's about it for me today, guys. I'm going to leave these components out because I'd like to put them side by side with the RC64 3 components and see how they compare outside of the speaker box. If you've enjoyed this content or just the show in general, please click that like and subscribe button below. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next week for the RC64 3 unboxing and another episode of PHT TV.